Hello dear students. Today we will be discussing how to represent vectors mathematically using different forms. So the forms that we have are rectangular form or the symbol then you have then you have trigonometric form then you have the exponential form and polar form so we will see in detail each one of these as we move along so first one is your rectangular form so already learned how to resolve vectors based on its x and y component so once you express your vector in terms of its x and y component such a representation is known as rectangular form so you already know how to represent a particular vector in terms of its components x component as well as y component so we will take the example suppose e1 is a vector e2 is the vector e3 e4 are all vectors so let the x component of e1 be a1 and y component of e1 be b1 okay so these are the components of the vector now the vector e1 can be written as a1 plus jb1 how because a1 is the x component of e1 and b1 is the y component of e1 so here we introduce an operator that is your j operator so we'll see uh, the importance of j operator as we uh, move to the next slide now such a representation is known as a complex representation you, you 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 might have already learned complex numbers in your mathematics class so there you must you must be uh, knowing that uh, this term is known as a real term and this is your imaginary term okay similarly here also you have a real term and imaginary term but in electrical engineering we represent this real term as in phase component okay in phase with the reference because this is your reference suppose this is a reference so the x component will be in phase with the reference so you call it as a in phase component and b1 is known as a quadrature component or quadrature in the sense shifted by 90 degree or the y component okay so this is also known as active component and this is also known as reactive component so we'll see why it is known as active and reactive in the uh, future classes okay so uh, at this point of time you just have to understand that a vector can be represented in terms of its x and y components together they are known as a rectangular representation and uh, the real term is known as in phase component and the imaginary term is known as a quadrature component now what is the significance of j operator this is a simple operator so what does an operator do we'll take an example suppose you have an number 3 okay i am representing this 3 like this this is 3 suppose this is a vector this is 3 bang into this 3 and it is in the positive x direction now i am operating mm, with a minus symbol on 3 so when i this is an operator this minus is an operator so once i operate uh, this i'll be getting minus 3 so this will be minus 3 now what this minus sign has done is that it has rotated this 3 vector 3 by an angle 180 degrees without changing the magnitude it has not changed the magnitude only the direction has been shifted by 180 degree it can be in any direction any uh, clockwise or counter counter clockwise it has rotated by 180 degree so that is what this simple mathematical operator does similarly this j operator once you operate this j it will be shifting the vector in counter clockwise direction only in counter clockwise direction by 90 degree okay and the definition of j is that j is given as root of minus 1 so that is the definition of j and it will be shifting your vector by an angle of 90 degree in the counter clockwise direction suppose you have a vector yeah so we'll see in detail now you have a vector v okay v is a vector which is defined in the positive x direction now i am operating with j so multiplying with j what happens jv means i have shifted the vector by an angle 90 degree in the counter clockwise direction without changing the magnitude so because 
magnitude is not changing it is a circle so magnitude remains the same but i have shifted the vector by 90 degrees okay now again i multiply with j what happens now my vector has further shifted by 90 degree in the counter clockwise direction and this is j squared v and uh, this j squared v is minus v it is equivalent to minus v or you can say that your j squared is minus 1 when you multiply j into j that is square root of this when you square this you will get minus 1 okay again you multiply with j again you shift by 90 degree you read j cube so j cube will be what will be j cube j cube will be minus j so j cube will be j cube v into v will be minus j into v so you have shifted by 270 degree from the reference so these are all from the reference values one single operation will shift it by 90 degree so three times it will be shifting by once you multiply it with uh, three times it will be shifting by 270 degree again you shift it you reach the starting point so that is j raised to 4 will be 1 or j raised to 4 into v will be v so you have completed one cycle so you have you multiply four times with j you reach the initial point so that is a simple uh, operation of j now we'll come to the vector form you already have seen uh, this a1 plus jv1 gives you vector now this is suppose this is a1 and by, uh, simply if you take b1 this will be b1 a1 and b1 in the same direction without any uh, shifting direction this is simply a1 and b1 now once you shift your b1 hmm, operate with j what happens you shift it by 90 degree so your j b1 will be suppose this is b1 this will be j b1 okay so ultimately what you get is that this is a1 and this is j b1 okay a1 j b1 okay because you are shifting and the magnitude is b1 it is shifted by 90 degree similarly e2 can be represented as minus a2 plus j b2 e3 is minus a3 minus j b3 okay because in the third quadrant and d4 will be a4 minus j b4 okay the x component is positive the y component is negative so in that way you can represent all this so the entire representation is false in the rectangular type of representation okay the next one is yeah uh, one more thing now uh, vector e1 is given by a1 plus jv1 the magnitude of the vector is given as root of a1 square plus b1 square and the angle with reference to the x-axis or reference axis is given by tan inverse b1 by a1 phi is equal to tan inverse b1 by a1 okay so these are the uh, uh, things that you that you can get out of this vector you can find out the magnitude as well as the angle by which your vector is shifted from the reference phi okay now moving on to trigonometric form so you have already represented this in rectangular form e1 is equal to a1 plus jv1 so what will be a1 a1 can be represented as e1 cos phi okay a1 can be represented as e1 cos phi and b1 can be represented as e1 sin phi so if you represent if you express your vector in terms of cosine and sine of the angles that is vector e1 will be equal to magnitude e1 into cos phi plus j sin phi this particular representation is known as trigonometric form of representation so the phi can be directly obtained from the rectangular form hmm? tan inverse that using that equation similarly vector e2, e2 can be represented as minus a2 plus j b2 okay so that will be e2 the vector e2 will be uh, this is rectangular and this is trigonometric form e2 into minus cos theta plus j sin theta okay so it's a simple rectangular uh, trigonometric form of the vector now coming to exponential form you are familiar with the Euler's equation e raised to j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta and e raised to minus j theta is equal to cos theta minus j sin theta so keeping uh, or uh, making use of this particular Euler equation uh, I can write vector e1 will be equal to a1 plus j v1 this is a rectangular form okay and which can be further expressed as e1 cos phi plus j sin phi this is a trigonometric form and which can be further expressed as e1 into e raised to j phi okay where e1 is the magnitude of the vector and phi is the angle with, with respect to the reference so this is in 
exponential form. Now, vector E4 can be expressed as A4 minus JB4, A4 minus JB4, which is rectangular form, E4 that is equal to E4 into cos phi minus J sin phi, which is in trigonometric form, which is further equal to E4 E raised to minus J phi, which is in exponential form, where E4 is equal to root of A4 square plus B4 square, and phi is equal to tan inverse of B4 by um, minus B4 by A4, it is minus B4 by A4, okay. Now the polar form of representation, this is the last form, you have represented your vector E1 as A1 plus J B1, B1 in rectangular form and again further in exponential, uh, sorry, uh, trigonometric form and further in exponential form. So last, this is your polar form where you are representing it in terms of magnitude and angle. So this is a magnitude E1 and angle phi, phi is the angle with respect to the reference. So this is your polar form of representation, simple representation based on its magnitude and angle, simply you can represent it. So E4 will be further equal to A4 minus JB4, which is a rectangular form, that is equal to E4 into cos phi minus J sin phi in trigonometric form, again E4 in E raised to minus J phi in exponential form and E4 angle minus phi in polar form. Okay. So these are the four types of representation that you have. Now, this is a, we will take up two examples. First one, obtain the exponential and polar form of the vector 3 plus j4, illustrate the vector by means of a vector diagram. Now you can pause the video for a minute and try to solve the problem and then you can continue the video and see the solution. Let I am defining vector E as 3 plus J4, vector was not defined, so I am defining it as 3 plus J4. So from the vector, I will be, uh, from this definition, you will be getting the magnitude as 5, 3 square plus 4 square and the angle 5 is equal to inverse of 4 by 3 which is 53.1 degree. Now in exponential form, this is equal to vector E is equal to 5 E raised to J 53.1 degree and in polar form, this, will, this vector E will be equal to 5 angle 53.1 degree. Okay, so you have uh, simply expressed in terms of exponential and polar form. Now, coming to the vector diagram, for drawing the vector diagram, what do you need? You need the magnitude of the vector as well as the angle. At what angle it is being shifted from the reference. So, you have the vector E which is having a magnitude of 5 and it is shifted from the reference over a positive x direction by 53 degree. So I can draw this vector with a magnitude of 5 and at an angle of 53.1 uh, degrees. So the x component will be 3 and the y component will be 4. That also can be marked. Now the second question. A vector represented by 20 minus j 2 pi by 3. You have to obtain various equivalence forms of the vector and illustrate by means of vector diagram, the magnitude and the position of the vector. So you have to represent this using all the representations. So this is given in exponential form. So you can represent it in terms of um, rectangular, trigonometric as well as polar form. Then also by vector diagram. So you have four mathematical representation plus one uh, diagrammatic or graphical representation based on vector diagram. So again you can pause the video for a minute, solve it and then continue. Now the vector, uh, yeah, the vector is represented by 20 e raised to minus j 2 pi by 3. So your vector, I am defining E as 20 e raised to minus j 2 pi by 3. So from this definition of the vector you can obtain the angle phi which is minus 2 pi by 3 or minus 120 degree. This is in radians, this is in radians or 120 degree in counterclockwise direction or one minus 120 degree in counterclockwise direction or 120 degree in clockwise direction. So it is minus 120 degree, so it will be minus 120 degree in counterclockwise direction or 120 degree in clockwise direction. Now the rectangular form E is given as A plus JB, this is a general form A plus JB. So A is E cos phi, so E is given, the magnitude of E is, can be obtained as 20 e into cos phi, phi is already there, minus 120, so you will be getting minus 10, again b is e sin phi, so that is 20 sin minus 120, this 
minus 17.32 so your rectangular form of representation is this vector is equal to minus 10 minus j 17.32 and the polar form can be expressed very easily from the uh, this exponential form 20 angle minus 120 okay I have not uh, uh, given the trigonometric form that also can be found out easily 20 into uh, you can obtain the value of cos angle plus j that way you can express your uh, trigonometric form now coming to the vector diagram so you are asked to obtain vector diagram and you have to mark the magnitude and the position so in vector diagram it is much that you should be knowing the magnitude as well as the position with reference to the uh, with respect to the reference sorry uh, this is y and this is x now um, okay now the magnitude is 20 that is already there and it is shifted by minus 120 from the reference in counterclockwise or 120 degree in clockwise direction so it comes in the third quadrant the x, the x component is 10 the y component is 17.32 and it is shifted by 120 degree in this direction clockwise direction so this is where your vector ends up, ends up. okay so this is a vector diagram that you should be getting okay so hope uh, the concepts are clear okay so you should be able to represent vectors in different form and uh, convert one form to another form very easily okay and each of each one of these representation is having specific importance based on the uh, use okay this will be used particularly in different uh, analysis okay you have a, a rectangular will be used in one case in another case uh, using polar will be easy so you, that you will see in the coming lectures how to use it or where to use it okay uh, now you can understand that the vector can be represented by five methods four mathematical methods as well as one graphical method so all these five are important these are all related all are very similar also hmm? all are same representation of a single vector so hope uh, it's clear so thank you happy learning